Darcy's got herself a gun. It's a beef jerky gun, but today we're working with beef jerky. Instead of doing regular beef jerky, that can be a problem for those of you who have some dental problems. This beef jerky, which is made from ground beef, uh, is easier to chew and a little less trouble to work on. So while this is not necessarily a review of this particular jerky gun, I'm going to talk to you about some of the issues I had with it, working with the beef that I had. And I'm going to walk you through some of those problems so that'll help you make better jerky in the end. And no matter what the problems were, we've got good beef jerky. Okay, so we're going to work with the Nesco jerky gun today. This is just the basic Nesco one. So what we're using today is going to be the double hole nozzle here. That's our preference about what we've played with so far. There is a, uh, a tube version, but we don't like it because aesthetically these do not look good to us. We'll eat them because we eat them. There is also a nozzle that has one long tube, one long hole here that we didn't like because it's really wide and it was not as easy to chew. And the thing for us is that we like the ground beef better than regular beef jerky because it's easier to chew, especially when you have dental issues. This doesn't get stuck in your teeth the same way and it's just a little easier. So what we have uh, is this is 93% uh, ground beef. It's 93.7. It's it's the leanest ground beef that we can buy um, and you want something really lean because it helps cut down on the greasiness of what beef jerky is. Also what came with my Christmas present is a couple boxes of Nesco seasonings. This is just a fast easy way to do this. You can use whatever seasonings you want. We're going to use the hot and spicy and we're going to use the teriyaki today. So while each of these packets it comes with a packet of seasoning and then there is also packets of jerky cure which is the salt that cures the meat in order to make this remotely shelf stable. And I'm going to tell you, even with 93.7, this tends to be a little greasy after, and I wouldn't trust on the shelf for long because the, the fat's turning ran rancid. So I would still store this in the refrigerator or the freezer. Because my family likes big, bold flavors, usually a packet like this would, would season two pounds of beef. But we prefer bigger, so we're going to do one packet for one pound. So this is the hot and spicy, which is going to go for my guys. I'm just gonna pour it in here. Oh, this is not what I intended to do, but we're gonna make it work anyway, okay? What I found that in trying to mix this with the beef, the seasonings didn't mix well. So my tip is to add a little bit of water, okay? You're gonna make a marinade out of what they gave you. Now for each of these, I'm also only going to use half of the salt because while we like it salty, we don't like it uber salty and we're not trying to store this. And I'm also going to go ahead and add the bit of water to this one. It won't mix quite the same way, but it's going to be closer. Now, of course, you can use any kind of marinade that you already have in the cabinet. You might have teriyaki. You might have some other kind of beef seasoning things that you're doing. You can do dry marinades that you can find on the inter internet everywhere about uh, making these kind of seasonings for your meat. I'm going to pour that in with my beef. For the first mistake that I made, when I was doing this, I wasn't paying attention to the water amount because I was in a rush trying to get through this. So what I should have done is added a small amount of water to make the marinade for that small amount of beef. Uh, having the beef that was a little too thin, later I went in and added about a quarter pound of beef to it again, which I did off camera, to try to get that ratio back of beef to liquid. All right, to load our jerky gun, just gonna take off the top ring in the nozzle, then there is a button here to pull out the plunger, okay? So the plunger works like that when you're squirting it. Just pull it all out. So we're just gonna start loading this up. You, these hold about a pound of meat. And then just, just set the nozzle right on there. Put your ring on. So if you're using mesh on your trays, which I do recommend doing, Yes, it's one more thing to clean, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be a lot easier to clean the mesh than it is to clean off of your wire rack. Something else I find that I would do is that as I get started, I put my hand over the end here and just kind of squeeze and get the pressure going so that all the meat's down there so that it doesn't break up so much. Now, the next problem I ran into, ran into is that I could not get this beef to come out of the jerky gun intact. I had a lot of riveting happening and it had a lot of breakup. So, so of course my first thought was is that it was still too liquidy from the marinade that I added to it. But it turns out that this particular kind of beef, it's 93% lean, 7% fat, but it contained a lot of sinew. 
that actually was causing a lot of the problem. As it was coming through the jerky gun, it was getting caught on that barricade between the two slots, making the beef break up. Now, I'm not saying that me adding liquid to the marinade in the beginning wasn't also a cause, but because I've been doing jerky all week long with the same gun with different kinds of beef, I didn't have this problem. This is the one that I had the problem with. So I think it was this particular cut of beef and also it catching on the barricade between those two slots was causing the biggest problem here. So for those of you who do ground beef a lot and have had no problem with this jerky gun, leave some tips down below to make this work better. I wish I had a video of the other ones that I've done while I'm working on other recipes, but I didn't do video of it to show that they work just fine. But this particular cut of beef, uh, in this day, I could not make it work. So what I did instead is I switched over to the wide slot, which works just fine. Um, and then I also bought another jerky gun that gives me a single thin slot like this without having to worry about that barricade and it works just fine. All right, so here's our beef jerky. We have spicy, more spicy, more spicy, teriyaki, okay? And even with the trouble that the gun is giving me, it's still gonna come out with some great jerky by the time we're done. So typically you would set your beef to dry at 145 F, which is 60 C, but the National Center for Home Foods Preservation re recommends 160 and above just to be safe. That's what we're gonna dry now. We're just gonna get started. I don't even look at the timer. We're looking for done. We're not looking for it's done when the timer goes off. And here we go. Okay, while drying or while you're going to store, whichever you wanna do it, you, you can go through here and just pat these dry. You can start, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm starting to see where it's collecting a little bit of moisture from the fat that's there. I'll take this up. Yeah, you can't quite see. There's a little bit here. It'll be a little bit more on the bigger pieces. And thankfully, patting them during the process, it's gotten a lot out. But you can see where it's starting to pick up a little bit right there. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. But it's just a little bit of, of the leftover fat that's coming out. So basically to store, I just do this where I do every other jerky in paper towel like this to allow it to just roll and collect any moisture that's gonna happen like that. And then we slip them into a zip top bag. And they're gonna go in this into the refrigerator for a day or two while, uh, while they finish and everybody can snack on them. Typically, when you store beef jerky, it is most optimally stored in the refrigerator or the freezer. And I didn't flip these, so that some of them are sticking a little bit. Because um, the fats can turn rancid. These are not fully cured, although they use some curing salt. I didn't use enough, and we like it that way. But unless they're cured... This, this fat can turn rancid on the shelf, uh, and any moisture that might still be there, if you let it be soft because you prefer it being kind of soft jerky, these are pretty soft, and they're going to break up pretty easily because that's the benefit of doing the ground beef is that it's softer. It doesn't get in your teeth the same way. You can chew it a little better, but if you prefer soft jerky, that jerky probably is still moist, and it's going to mold over time if you put it on the shelf. Now, if you go through the full curing process with the curing salts in enough quantity to make it cured, you might get more shelf life, and that's great. But these are still going to be great for storing uh, and taking with you on camping and back backpacking and hiking trips. Uh, having just a few days, a week of it being out, you're probably going to be fine. But for long-term storage, let's get this in the refrigerator. So I want to show you the, the variety of the ones that we've been doing. So these are the tube version of using through the Nesco. Um, it is just a, a half dose of the seasoning and two pounds of meat. We were testing to see how it was going to taste. This is the next version that we tried with the same seasoning. Uh, this was using the double, the double nozzle of the jerky gun. This one was a little better outcome than what this last batch was. And so then we switched over to the wide and this is how it turned out. Now, if you want to see other dehydrating videos that I've done on making snacks, check out these videos right here. Go look at that one right there. It's going to be right there. And until I see you again next time, keep preserving.